Hello, welcome back to All Gathered Up, the show that runs parallel alongside with the great British sewing bee. And we, we look at skills and techniques that come up and then go into them a bit in more, more detail uh, because we've got the time to do that. Because you know what the sewing bee's like, boom, in an hour, <laughs> they've gone through everything. And we're, we're like still catching up sometimes with what did they do there? Well, we can tell you exactly what they did there. And because we have Carol Elaine, Master Taylor Couturier, as always, guiding us through some of those techniques. Good evening, Carol. Good to see you again. Good to see you in the warm glow of late, oh, early summer light, Stuart. Uh, Look at it? you. Come, coming through. Um, week six, we're, uh, we've had five weeks. Five weeks have been and gone. We're now into the second half of the series. Week six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. So that means we're we're getting close to like the, 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 the bit mm -hmm. where, where the quarterfinals and the semifinals. But we're at week six and we're at kids week. Well, mm -hmm. some people love it, some people not so, but there is something special about seeing those dinky little clothes, though, isn't there? <laughs> I love sewing children's wear. It's so satisfying. It's, um, you know, because it takes a shorter time to make things and yeah. you can cut corners a little bit. And it, you know, it, the garments get built so fast and it just satisfaction, you know, imme almost immediately. I, I'm liking the sound of that you can cut corners. <laughs> <laughs> Good, good. Well, and you've made many a garment I've seen. You've uh, got some pictures here to show everyone. Let's take a look. Everyone, look at some of these clothes that Carol has made for little people over the years. Tell us about this one, Carol. Well, for those of you who love your classical music, this is Stephen Isilis. He's one of the finest cellists in the world. And I made his tail suit, which you see there. Um, yeah. One thing I would point out is you can see that the arms are quite long. Well, this is because, you know, when you play the cello, you, your, your arms are lifted and, and oh, so... Oh, yes, you they're want, bent a lot. Yeah. That's right. So you want to make sure you have a, a long reach and then the sleeve doesn't ride up too much. So I made Stephen's shirt and bow tie and tail coat and, <gasps> and uh, trousers. And then when I delivered it, I surprised him with this set of a uh, romper suit, which was a tail, a built in tails for Gabriel, his son. And uh, that would have been about 25 years ago. So, uh, <laughs> and this was wonderful. Uh, they loved it. They called their photographer in and uh, the wonderful Peter Mountain who shot um, a lot of classical musicians um, in, the, in the 90s uh, when I had a company called The Concert Store, brought this wonderful classical plinth in and Gabriel hopped up on oh. top, and what you see is just an enchanting photograph. Isn't it just? Mm. Oh, wonderful. Mm. And then we've got this to see. Look at these two, everyone. Tell us about okay, these two. So, right. This was a bride that came to me, and she wanted an Elizabethan dress and, and over jacket. So we started with the dress, and she wanted this elaborate strap, which she had seen in a costume. Uh, and it's this ruched, yes, um, with a stay uh, underneath it and a double row of top stitching to, to keep everything in place. Yeah. And then um, again, I, we talked about, well, they have a, they have a little girl uh, who was uh, just over a year old. And we just started to talk about what Cecily was going to wear. And, and I said, well, leave it with me. And so when she came for her final fitting, I had this. Um, oh. And so the bib on the outer edge of the bib has the same uh, detail that yeah, uh, beautiful Bryce had on her straps. And then I, I backed the bib with um, uh, she, the little girl was teething early, so I backed it with waterproof uh, fabric. Oh, <laughs> so we have... good thinking. <laughs> so it could be cleaned. Yeah. Oh, and it wonderful. Didn't go into the, it and then look the at yeah. look at this delightful little uh, number, everyone. You're like oh. Look at that. Yeah. Worldwide we have, map. Um, <laughs> isn't that gorgeous? That is a lovely fabric. And I, uh, well, I was so happy to find that. Um, I got it on Etsy, actually. And uh, we have a, a lot of friends in Japan. Um, Mike, uh, my partner, travels there three or four times a year. And it's where his work is based. Um, a little girl called Hibari, which means Skylark. Um, oh, beautiful. And I made her this. 
isn't that a pretty name? And so uh, in Hibari uh, Chan is, I think, two. And I wanted to show her the map of the world, obviously, um, in this romper suit. But also I wanted to point out where she lives and where oh. we live in London and oh. where I came from. So, so you've got you've got these three different sections which you've chosen and yes. I've got a close up here if I press my buttons right let's get rid of that so that's the top part look at that Tokyo So that's there's where Hibari-chan and her parents live Oh yep. and then you've got and you This is me I hail from Detroit Michigan That's Wonderful that. and then um, and the other then, where you then Good our old. home here in london so you know um, clothes tell a story and clothes yeah can, you know clothes can educate they can they can they can um raise questions um and for children are fascinated with that um and so it gives you something to talk about absolutely and like you said last week which i think is the delightful term and many of the comments in the video last week said oh, i love that term um uh painting with fabric uh, i think you said halfway yes, through well yeah. in a kind of a way yes. you have you have painted you've put pe things together to to be able to mm -hmm. then tell a story with it's delightful absolutely um so also, i would say um cool. a, cu a couple of things about sewing for children is that we at tailors study anatomy um and we uh, we study proportions and everything and the thing about children is which is interesting is they're they um they're about half as tall uh if you have an adult which is eight heads tall and then you have um a, uh, a girl or a boy they're about four heads tall the difference being that um with a child their necks are quite short compared to our necks grow as we grow. And, and also our legs grow in proportion with our torso. Wow. But when we're children, our torso is out of proportion with our legs. It's taller than our legs are. So if you're trying to get, you know, the lengths right of things, often you, you make what looks like a, a, a in proportion dress and then it on a, on a toddler it'd be way too long because their legs are quite short. Okay. And, you want to get shape in, but yeah. oftentimes you have the chest and the waist measurement are the same. Sometimes chest, waist and hip are the same. They're so cylindrical the, little yeah. people. Yeah. So you have to work, you just got to work around that. And I think that's really interesting is to understand the proportions as we grow and how we Absolutely. can use those proportions. And that did come through on some of the chatter and analysis on the programme. They did talk about that briefly, didn't they? So it's mm. nice to reinforce mm. that for everyone and, and be able to understand that. But one skill that came up several times um, and uh, uh, was certainly asked for, <laughs> I think I said to you <laughs> earlier, uh, let me check my messages because I didn't have time to actually then get it into the chat. Who was it that said... Um, let's have a look. Uh, it was uh, Judy. She goes, oh, please, Carol, can you give tips on applying bias binding for seam finishing after last mm -hmm. night's episode? Well, Carol was already on it as well because it was, it was, it is a skill that you use a lot of the time in in dressmaking and couture work. I know I do a lot of binding for quilt work, but I'm sure you're doing some sort of binding in, in couture work nearly all the time, aren't you? You do, you use, you use bias sections a lot. You know, if you're making piping, or if you're, let's say you're hand li uh, half lining a bespoke jacket, you're gonna bind all the seams. Um, and then you just, you know, working with bias does come in handy. Uh, making rouleau, you know, yeah. turning rouleau, we saw that, mo the most unfair part of the challenge, I thought, was making a thin belt loop and having to turn that in terry cloth. That was yeah. mean. Yeah, that was and, really and, mean. and let's reinforce that because when they were judging Fove, good old Fove, uh, uh, with some of her comments, mm -hmm. Patrick, um, you know, as we you were just saying, there's our belt, and we've got all these little loops for the dressing gown that they had to turn the right way out. And Patrick said on on I think the edge of her belt, one of the points wasn't fully pointed out and she went yeah good luck with that that took an hour <laughs> and yes, it's like exactly. oh. yeah 
That was some criticism well, it's, it's for a... such a specific skill, which if you're if you're if you've got uh, not much time, then actually pointing the points out in that belt is probably going to be the thing that gets dropped. As you say, cut a corner. That's the thing I would drop in order to be able to finish my garment. And why even bring that up? There's 37 yeah. pieces in that, right? Yeah. Why? Yeah. yeah. I mean, it was a bit ridiculous. It was a huge challenge. It was yeah. such a big ask to do that and to get everything in line and to work with that cloth. I think that was a bit of a, a stretchy terry. I, I, um, it wasn't as thick as some terry cloths you yeah. know, or towelings. I think that was, um, that was a bit kinder, but everybody had trouble with that. Yeah. You know, turning the belt was difficult enough, but turning the loops... Yeah, I, I was saying to Tig earlier, I think I loved that challenge. It was delightful. I could imagine many a home sewer wanting to make that for their little one. It was fun to do, um, mm. easy to access. But if, if they were doing that, would they have put all those uh, loops? Would they have just done a, a one rope sort of belt bit and, and not worried about the detail there? I think they could have, they could have perhaps changed that because, as you say, that was a lot to do in four hours, wasn't it? I think if I, if, if I was in that competition, I would have made a double turn on that, pressed it into shape and just did a slip stitch and no one would have known. Oh. And I would have wasted no time at all turning it out. <laughs> I'm talking about the belt loops. Honestly, that was so yeah. tricky and everybody had such a time with it. Absolutely. Well, let's then uh, answer those questions for Judy and many others out there with, with binding because it came up several times Tony Beanie had never, I don't think, he, I think he said he'd never done it before. And it is, if you've never done it before, it is going to be alien to you and a little bit odd on what you're doing. And then some got it slightly twisted and so forth. So we thought, mm -hmm. right, Carol, give us the detail on it. So take it away, Carol, about bias binding and, and enclosing that All raw right. edge. Sure thing. Oh, look at that terry towel in there. Okay, <laughs> so this is quite, this is a very thick um, washcloth and here's a piece of bias binding. Now this is satin. It, I generally use satin versus cotton because the okay. color stays true. Um, and also it, it, it's, it's a less temperamental than, than um, the cotton. So you know, or you, if you haven't seen, here's, here's how you install it, okay? You okay. open up your binding and you're going to sew in that ditch. That first sew, one. Yeah, this first ditch, but you're okay. going to sew, not in the ditch, you're gonna sew just a little bit outside it toward oh. this edge. Okay? Well, I've already, I've already learned want, something already. Yes, the reason you do that is you need as much uh, turning as possible. You need as, as much width to turn it as possible. So let's okay. just see how this works, okay? I'm gonna put it in the machine. Now it's very, um, it's very thick. You could use a walking foot, but okay. as I said last week, I've lent all my um, domestic yes. equipment out to students, so <laughs> I don't Do the have best you can. The there you go. So I'm gonna sew this. Not gonna stretch the binding. I'm not gonna feed it in. I'm sewing flat, right? And I'm sewing just to the right of the ditch. Yep. Okay, that's that's enough to get going. And now let's turn the work there. So there you are. You can see this, you can see the crease now. Let me just lift that up. You can see the crease. I haven't borrowed from the crease. So there's no. a nice flat edge there, folded edge, yeah? Yep. So then you turn it round. And then you want to pull this around and then you're going to top stitch. Oh, I see. This edge here. Okay, you're going to top stitch this edge here. Now I'm going to encourage you to use pins for this. Okay, now let's see if I can cool. explain this. Carol, can you just Take go back? Pin. Sorry to interrupt. Can you just go back? Can I see the sure. sewing line? Can, the, can you show us the sewing line? Just because I lost where... Oh, right. Oh, I get you. Oh, there you go, audience. Right. Okay. That's perfect. Keep it there. So you can see... Oh, go back the other way. That's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so you can see the sewing line there is just outside the crease. I get you. And now what have you done? You moved yes, the... Yeah. 
you then pull the rest of that fabric out, that bias over, did you? Yes, that's right. So you let this edge fold back. Yeah. Okay. And then you turn it ah, around. Perfect. You go over your over your stitching line. Yeah. And then you bring it round to this side. Oh, look okay. at that. And then you've got a lovely, neat edge of so, bias. I yeah. get you. Yes. Yes. Now, with your pins, take your pin. Can you see this now? Yes, perfect. Put it in this, this folded edge and draw it a little bit towards yourself. Okay. Cool. Yeah. I'm going to do another one. Okay. Take your pin. Put it in about a sixteenth of an inch. Pull it a little bit toward you. So you're pulling it kind of tight. So you're so you're, you're the bias. It tight. So, yeah. so the bias is really filling up the edge. So you because you don't want a, a um you want the the terry to go right up to the edge of the binding, don't you? You don't want a, a hole or a space. That's right. Yeah. You want this seam allowance to go right, right. in the middle. Yeah. Of this, okay. Brilliant. Yeah, and yeah. To, to, to make sure that you, and it's biased, so it's going to stretch, isn't it? Yeah. I put the pin in about at sixteenth of an inch. I'm just going to pull it a little bit toward me, and then set the pin again. Let's do another one. Pin in at sixteenth of an inch. Pull it toward yourself, and then set your pin. Okay, so that's what it looks like. Beautiful. There we go. Yeah, that's, and that's great, Carol. Like and look at that lovely. Outside. Yeah. Okay. Now let's sew it. Good luck. <laughs> and this, Good luck. I know, it's live. <laughs> It's very, very thick. Now you can use this hand right here yeah. to encourage it over. Okay, your machine is going to do the work. Now, I, I don't like to run over pins. I, I do on the sewing bee all the time. But you can yeah. use this Wise not hand to. here yeah, to encourage. And you're just gonna pick a point on your presser foot so that you know that you're catching this bias binding in. So just tell me where you're, where are you actually looking? Are you looking at your needle and the gap to, to get your... At, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I'm looking at the needle and where it lands. Okay. And I know that the camera angle that we have here is not, is not perfect. No, that's all right. I can, we can see though. Look yeah. at that, everybody. Yeah. <gasps> Look at that. Yeah, so there that's, we are. Now, yeah. what's happening on the other side is you have a row of stitching, let's see, which is about here, but that's all right. That's okay. You're just binding the seam. So that's... You know, no one's going to... No, that's hidden in the terry toweling. Yeah. Yeah, it's hidden in the terry toweling. So, see, in fact, in my bobbin, I have red thread so that it doesn't show here. And on the top, the top thread, I have a navy. Yeah, so we can see it. Okay. So that we can see that, so that yeah. you, you can all see the top stitching and then this one is hidden. So there you are. There's your binding. There's your binding. You open it up. You're going to sew just to the to the other side of this stitch yeah. toward the edge. Yeah. Okay. So what what and technically is that? Is that technically that each each fold? Is that a half, um, a quarter of an inch? It's a big quarter. It's a small centimeter. I think oh, okay. this is three quarter, three quarters of an inch binding. Um, wow. I don't know what it is in in, in millimeters. Oh, that's sure. right. No, I think but, most um, people. I think most people. It's done in inch, isn't it? In in the fabric world. So. Yeah. Yeah. And you can get um, different sizes, of no, course, I, can't you? You can. You can. Now I wanted to show you a couple of other things. Um, yeah, please do. When you're, when you're working. Um, when you're working with awkward fabric and you have to bind them, you sew your you sew your your seam, which is this red line here. That's your seam, okay. Oh, okay. And I've yeah. sewn this at about a about a half an inch. Um, and then in order to control your fabric, just one trick. I've sewn a second line here, just to keep the edges of the fabric together and under control. Oh. So nothing can, and then you can take your binding, and again, 
See, when you put your binding on here, you're, everything's under control. Can you see oh, that? Oh, yes. So, because of that extra. Okay, so because of the extra seam that you have yeah. there. Now, these two edges are together. Now, when you wrap that around and you pull it slightly, I've given myself a bigger seam allowance. So I'm binding kind of half of the seam allowance. And nothing's interfering with with the actual seam itself. Seam. Brilliant. Okay. So one tr trick is to just, again, secure the edges of your fabric, okay, before you bind. Yeah. And then the final trick, this is a little bit fussy, but I find it helpful sometimes to mark a gauge. So I've every four centimeters, which is too close, but I want to show you this so that you could extend that and maybe you'd say every 12 inches, every oh, okay. 18 inches. Yeah. Make a mark and I've made the mark in the mid on the underside of the binding. Okay. All the way through the binding. Then I fold it back and I transfer the line so that it's all the way across the binding. Okay. Now when you let's sew this on. I love your machine and the sound of it. It's so quiet. Oh, it purrs, <laughs> doesn't it? Beautiful. Yeah. Now you can see this, it, that that fold is very crisp. I haven't borrowed anything from that. Wow. Now, I'm going to turn this around. And now, um, let's go back to our map that we made, first of all. Yeah, our lines, we I can got, see them. Okay, we've yeah. got a line here. I'm going to put a pin all the way through my work. All the way through. So there's a line there, the a line through. there, a line there, pin, pin, pin. Pin and pin. Then we're going to turn it over and I'm going to make a mark here on the underside where the pin is. Right. Now remember, I'm using a very tight scale, but yes. this would drive you crazy. This is too much. This is yeah, too much. Okay. You might yeah. do this every 12 inches. Okay, now we take our pins out. Take your pins out because you've got your marks over. with your pen. Yeah, yeah. So there we are. There's our line. There's our mark. Okay. <gasps> oh. So every 12, 18 inches. Now, when you put your pin in, you can mark this up perfectly. Ah. Oh. Give it a little bit of. A See, does that, I hope that makes sense to everybody. Absolutely. Home. It comes, we've talked yeah. about this before. It comes down to preparation, doesn't it? Yes, it takes Always. another 10, 15, 20 minutes, but it will save so much time afterwards because you probably won't have to rip out or you'll be able to sew it quicker and more in, have more enjoyment over it because you've got the markings there, the preparation to help you. Absolutely. What goes wrong is when you're just working freehand and you're folding yeah. this over and and it yeah. starts to twist. You and, see that? and that is and what we saw what so many times. The twisting, that's what, um, they, a lot of the feedback, wasn't it, was, oh, your binding's mm -hmm. twisted, your binding twisted, and that's, that's how it twists yeah. then, isn't it? Yeah, and sometimes this comes out if you're working too fast. That just, yeah. whoops, that just comes out. And there you've got your raw edge, which I think happened to Tony. Yeah. So he was actually, and then what a lot of people did is they thought, oh, the hell with it. I'm just going to do this. And I'm going to top stitch it down. Yeah, yeah. So a few of the contestants didn't bother wrapping it around. They just sewed it. They did. Yeah, exactly like down. that. So then what you had is on the other side, you had a top stitch. Yeah. Oh. That's what happened to Mia. Yeah. That's what happened to, I believe, uh, I forgot who else, but certainly happened to Mia. And I, because... and I, could, I could understand it. If you've got the, the, the matching thread, it's, it's done its job, isn't it? But it's well, not it's what was not asked what they for. they wanted them to do. Ab and, and we heard that a couple of times. So yes. 
Yeah. Oh, one and more thing, if I may, about children. Of course, of course. Can I? So sometimes you can buy binding, and it's folded. It's a very, it's a small one. It's about a quarter of an inch binding. But you know, you might notice with this camera angle that one edge is shorter than the other. Absolutely. If you hold it there, edge, yeah, there. yeah, that top one finishes, and then the bottom one. It's got a bottom lip. It's showing more, isn't it? That's right. That's right. The idea there is if you sew onto the shorter, the narrower side, Yeah. if you sew onto that side, it's automatically caught up in the other side. If you can see right. the pin there. Absolutely. Um, Get it. Yeah. Yeah. So let's say you've got to make something really tiny. Okay. Cool. You've got a this dear little very thing. tiny bodice. <laughs> a very tiny bodice. So you're working in very small spaces. Um, uh, and because it's small, you want something in scale. So you would might choose this smaller binding. And it's, it's a bit tricky to work with. But if you're working it with a mitered corner, okay, now this is the narrower side. So when we sew here, it's automatically going to be caught in oh, from the back. Yes, because okay. there have been times when I've done my quilt binding uh, or some binding and I've sewn on the front and when I turn it down, I can see some of my sewing hasn't, you know, it's gone a bit on, yeah, off and it's not caught. And you think, yeah. oh, damn. That's right. Now, you can uh, prepare your binding. Let's go back to the larger binding. You can prepare it in that way. So you can press it prepare your binding ahead of time so that there's that same displaced. Yes, that lip, uh, I get you, yeah. You have some yeah, work, okay, if, you so can you buy, can, if you can buy yeah, it already yeah. done, yeah. Yes, exactly. Uh, and so just remember, if you're mitering a corner, now let's see, how can I get that toward Oh yeah, we can see that. Oh yeah, look at your corner there, okay. yeah. Yeah, so if you're mitering a corner, and if it's a 90 degree angle, you just open up, open up your piping, your your bias binding, open it up, and crease that edge, and then when it comes Fold. over, oh. yeah, there it is. Yeah. So there's there's that. That's one thing you can do, and you can do this on both sides, and it and you will have achieved that. Um, the same purpose of that you did with this single yeah. exercise where you and we stop here and it catches in there. And you did some beautiful, um, we, we both did actually, because uh, I remember binding, because uh, they were doing quilt binding, and I do uh, binding too. So we both did two wonderful tutorials um, last year. So I'll make sure I put them in the link below. You can go to Carol's uh, YouTube page and, and have a look at those tutorials. Oh, that's great. Thanks, Stuart. Um, just one final thing about working in very small, tight spaces. Yeah, if you, of have, if you want to bind a neck, um, same thing applies. You're going to sew on the narrower edge and catch it in on the bottom. But what I did to prepare this is I pressed this into a curve first. Oh, wow. <laughs> Look at so that. you just put it on the iron, yeah. put it on the iron, give it a tug, coax it around, and get it close to the shape that you want, and then you can just sandwich yeah. that in. And the so beauty you're not of, gonna have a fight. And and that's the beauty of bias, isn't it? You can uh, it is. ease it and maneuver it and put it into the position yes. you want with a bit of manipulation yes. with the iron, of course. Mm -hmm. That's right. Look at that. Yes. So bias bias is, is lovely to work with. It's got great it's got great properties. So Try it. Try some small samples. This would be a real challenge. Um, and don't don't forget that um, you can um, you can mark off every now and then so that yeah. you, you know that you're not going to have that what they call puckering yeah. or you know the the dragging in it. And use oh. um, use a walking foot if you can, and use a bigger stitch because if you have to take anything out, it, you you don't want to be unpicking forever in a day. Okay, oh. so there we are. Oh, Carol, that was brilliant <laughs> as always. It just helps. Oh, and it's just nice to have these discussions 
because uh, mm. and I think that's why the show is really popular. People write in the comments. They just like listening to sewing conversation uh, and where it develops and, and what comes out and tips that comes out. Because um, we don't often get the chance to do this, do we? And, and, and many of us don't often have sewing friends either to to really have these lovely sewing conversations. So I know this show is is really valued by people because of of, of all those things. Well, sewing is, it's solitary, really, for most yeah. people, unless you're part of a group and everyone gets together and you're all working on a project and you've all got your, your <laughs> yeah. space. And, does, that doesn't happen you know, much, does I, it? No, 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 it doesn't. I, I must admit, I feel sorry. You know, we've got a lovely workroom full of people who are getting along very well. And to see them cutting this on the floor, you know, yeah. on their hands and knees, cutting yeah. things. And I, I don't think everyone has a proper cutting table. And no. so... Just uh, if you can, just get it would, kit yourself out of a proper sewing room. It's, it, it's um, well, it would it would show what's really needed. And I know, I suppose the reality is that some of us may be doing at home on our floor. But you know, if we could have the space and have the table, it would be good to look up to that to see what 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 you could have um, and what we could aspire to. Um, I think that would set good. Mm -hmm good standards for sure and you know uh, what 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 we could have in our in our sewing room of course we all have dreams of a wonderful sewing room like yours <laughs> well it's amazing how useful a sewing room is for other things yeah. as well once you have a big workspace it's uh, believe me it, it gets it gets filled with all sorts of projects I, well, it's like that even in my shop. You you, you clear a workspace and have it nice and tidy. And then suddenly, oh, I'll put that there and I'll put that there. And then before you know it, you're all cluttered <laughs> up again. Well, let's go into the round then where the bias, uh, uh, the, the, uh, the, the, certainly the binding issue came up, which was the pattern challenge. And as I say, it was a delightful idea, a delightful concept from the producers um, because... I think many a home sewer would do this. I want to make a garment for my little one. There it is, a dragon dressing gown, cotton toweling, bias binding, white and black felt for the eyes, and then the contrasting toweling for the spikes. Yes, what caused the issue was that belt and then how many loops they had to make all the way around. So that, that would have taken a lot of work because we know how hard it is turning something right side out anyway, isn't it? You know, with your, your safety oh, pin that you're yeah. pushing through. It's hard with normal fabric, let alone terry toweling. But um, yeah. I, this, I um, like... This challenge more than in any others, this, this challenge made me realise how impossible it is to do this in, in yeah. whatever time allowance they, they gave them. Uh, because four, in, in the camera it? goes around and they say... You know, they, they say to the guests, what are you doing? Oh, well, I'm, I'm just cutting all my triangles now and yeah. I'm doing this. And everybody's relaxed and, you know, at ease. And you think, is that how you would behave if you yeah. had, you know, four hours to do something? <laughs> but <laughs> look, not. look, because they all, other than the, the binding issue, they all managed to make it, which is <laughs> incredible. <laughs> and when you look at those there, don't they look cute? They're adorable. <laughs> um so uh, so there isn't really much to talk about uh from differences because they all got the terry toweling they all got the spikes the colors uh yes some of them were were picked on because their their eyes were too close to the back or too yeah. far forward or wonky <laughs> you know like that um which i thought was nitpicking a bit but that's because they did so well so we always say you've yeah. got to have a criteria and if eyes were their criteria then so be it but yes it was the binding and yeah. and let's um uh tony and fove um tony beanie uh which is there and fove which is there um sadly came at the lower end so let's take a look at especially tony's sorry tony he's gonna he's like i've got highlighting um where it was difficult and where he went wrong there you go carol yeah, can you yeah. see that yes so you see that so the whole of the binding is out he's, yeah. he's not you know it's off it's flat now um and he's kind of stitching in the ditch but he's got that raw edge yeah 
Oh, that's that's a sh that it's just I've really felt for him, and he's he's got such a great sense of humor. He said, yeah. "Oh no, I, I I tried six or seven different ways. Just keep looking, Patrick. <laughs> you'll you'll see, you'll see." And we've often said, and I said this to you, right? Patterns sometimes don't say everything. So I I texted viewers. I texted Carol early this week because I'm making my shirt, uh, and I've got it here to show you. So let's just quickly um, go back to this. Um, if I get my pieces. Shirt. Oh, beautiful. Look at Old that. Oh, the cloth. fabric. Isn't it? Oh, I like how you placed uh, you then, placed the lacy bit in the yeah, center back. That's the nice. Back, center oh, back. Oh, lovely. How good is that going to look? That is stunning. So that's the front. <laughs> then uh, the pattern says, you place your pattern uh, for the arm. You, you, so here's my arm. Uh, let's hold this up. There you go. So that's going to be like that and run right down there. But it says, oh, you put, put your pattern piece, it says cut two. But it doesn't say anything else. Um, so there's often with patterns an assumption that the sewer knows what to do. And I find that very frustrating. Uh, and I think that's kind of bad yeah. in a way. Why can't, why can't there, yes, if, if you know what you're doing, cut to, brilliant. But why can't there be a little asterisk saying, uh, go to page five if you've never done this before. Then I'd go to page yeah. five and it would say, cut to, but flip and this is where i had to say to carol i say i don't just cut two do i because if i put uh, my pattern piece on top yes. of two pieces of fabric i'm going to end up with two right arms and i know yes. it's obvious but i just had to check so i sent carol a text going oh do i do i have turned my fabric or do i turn and, and you said what did you say to me carol I said you. Oh, I said you were absolutely right because you were you were saying I have to flip my pattern piece over. So what you, you what you're doing is you're cutting one pair. Yeah. You're cutting a pair of things. So remember. Our opposites. You're cutting, yeah. you're cutting two, and you're cutting opposites. So when yeah. you look at it, maybe you have a front notch over here. Yeah. Your front notch on the other arm should be opposite to that. It can't be here. Yeah right or you end up yeah. with two right arms so they have to be opposite you see that our there's two your notch. notches yes. yeah and then our one notch yeah okay so that's but and then, that's why it's easier to just if you if you've got a big flat piece of fabric out then you have to flip your pattern over yeah if you have one piece of fabric that's folded then you have right sides together wrong sides on the outside or vice versa then you can just lay your pattern piece down because your fabric is opposite yeah each other but it's okay and and, and carol was lovely she said i've done this many times too you i you, have it's so easily done because you're you just literally the pattern says cut two so you cut two because you're not really thinking because the pattern piece says cut two it doesn't say be wary, cut two, but make sure you flip it <laughs> half. I, I know, I, yes. I yeah. pattern, Careful. space, space is money. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, here's how it happens easily. If you have a short length of fabric and you think, I'm not sure I can get this garment out of this. So I'll just, I'll cut it differently. I'll lay the fabric out in one piece. Yeah. And then I'll just, I'll just find it like a jigsaw yeah where everything fits that's me yeah and in that case what you need to do is you need to copy that sleeve pattern, pattern. you need to copy it so you have two yeah absolutely well and i'm then, gonna do and that then I, you know because look yeah. i've even written on this one piece cut two and i i'm i'm, I'm actually going to to, to scrub that out and I'm going to put sleeve because the uh, I presume this is the right one. Is it always the right one of a pattern? They only give you one piece, don't they? Is if, that? Yes, if they give you a, yes. And well, 
the writing is on is where you can read the writing. Yeah. Um, it, it you can put that anywhere. But oh, I see. The print side up, print side up, is going to cut one sleeve, and then you, yeah. if you're going to cut a second one, you have to go the print side down. Okay. So I, I might as so, well just say sleeve one, and then do another pattern piece with the opposite round, and say sleeve two. That's it's sure, the sa sure. safest way, isn't it? It is absolutely. And, and, and as we said before, yes, it me as the preparation, it means more prep. But actually, that prep of doing two pattern pieces will will save me probably a lot of mistakes in the future, won't it? Absolutely. Until you get used to what's going on yes. and do the same yeah. with your fronts. You need a right yeah. front and a left front. So I felt for the sewers there because I think at one point I did. I, was it Vicky said, bless her. She said, well, I didn't really I didn't really understand the instructions. And it's, I felt for you, Vicky, because there probably were no instructions or they assumed because that's what happens. And I find that very unfair. So I felt for Vicky, felt for Foe, felt for Tony, who had never, never, or some of them had never done binding before, who probably then mm -hmm. struggled with that concept of yeah. what actually am I doing? Where am I flipping? <laughs> and then before you know it, you've, you, you, you've got, it's gone wrong. So... But there we are. Yeah. You've and got it, you've got to have a skill, haven't you? That's what you're being assessed on, and that's how you whittle out the people who yes. do know and who don't know. Don't that's you? the wheat from the checks. Yeah. That's how it happens. Yeah. Um, you were talking about um, the different styles of um, Terry toweling, and I think you're right because look at that toweling there. That's your toweling. That was like your washcloth there. That's proper hairy yes. toweling. But I think Lizzie. I can't remember who else might have chosen just by random, but I don't know whether you can see it on this long shot, but hers was almost like a yeah. velvet toweling, wasn't it? There was no loops. Yes, I thought, yeah, exactly. Yeah, a bit more fluid, a bit easier to control. Absolutely. Definitely. So she yeah. might not have known that at the time when she picked it, but now we looking back on it, it's, it's almost like that smooth yeah. brushed cotton that you might have... Uh, you know, a, a cat blanket or something. You know, um, yeah. it's, it's no, that, I think that smooth. That's isn't a very it? good point. Yeah, that, that's you raise a good something really interesting there, and that is they've been given the pattern so they can see the pattern, and then they say on that table over there, everyone make a run for it. Well, <laughs> yes. the ex the experienced sewer is going to know already. Yeah. What's because I think they were told this has got a belt, this has loops, this has this, this has all this stuff you've got to do. So they're going to be thinking, I want the easiest fabric that's going to cooperate with me on this. Yeah, so. but and look at the size of that belt and the length of that mm. belt. Good luck with turning that through under pressure, hey? And and all no, those little uh, loops, what do you call them? Rulo was it rulos? Do you call them that? Or belt straps? What's the posh word for it? Yeah, the belt. Well, belt. It's a belt loop, belt isn't it? Loop. Belt loop. Belt loop. Yeah. Um, but, but that's that's tricky. But when you look at them, so is well done. Well done for doing that in Adorable. four hours and, yeah. and cutting all those spikes out, turning them and, mm -hmm. and bagging them out. Oh, marvellous. Yeah, they were all different sizes too, weren't they? They were yeah. the, the spikes were different. Yes. Yeah, they had to cut. I think there were three different sizes. So uh, um, yes, so, very you know, very challenging project considering the time. But yeah, all did really well other than that binding. So uh, hope the binding helped. Let's go now on this. Have a quick flick through the final two rounds uh, and and um, let's have a, an analysis of those. So there's the transformation challenge. They had to, um, it was quite a simple one, actually. So yeah. simple, Carol. They took time away from them because all they had to do, I say all, but it must be only all because it was 75 minutes to jazz up a child's mm -hmm. denim jacket using hand-me-downs, scraps or old clothes mm -hmm. that are now hand-me-downs. Um, so just to jazz up, well... Mm -hmm. they're all jazzed up. There's some nice ones there, aren't there? There's some mm -hmm. excellent ones oh, too. Some beautiful ones. I mean, I, I felt very bad for folk because this was, very, this was not very well judged in my opinion. Um, she made new sleeves. She made a double set 
two layers yep. of new sleeves, two collars, and a skirt. And she, she had what I would call the most successful transformation. And I felt very bad because I think the judging was way off the mark on this one. Where I agree. You had, um, I think Tony, who does some lovely work, uh, his was a simple applique. Yeah. And I think he came in second to Lizzie, who did a lovely transformation as well. But it didn't have the work or the engineering no. or, no. Or, the, or the complete change that Fauve um, accomplished. And I didn't get that. I, I, I was, you know, why? Uh, and, and in 75 why miss, minutes. Why did the judges miss that? Yeah. Yeah. But why did they miss that? Why did the judges not see all the work that had gone into Fauve's? I, well, when, when they said the criteria and they said they got to jazz it up, Esme said at the end, um, but one thing it needs to be, it has to be exciting. I don't know whether that led their criteria more and the, the whole idea of jazzing up, mm -hmm. uh, they, they lost the idea of the transformation challenge, which is balmy because the transformation challenge mm -hmm. is about transforming something. But actually, yes. It, yes. you didn't want them to transform it. You just wanted them to jazz it up. So I think mm -hmm. they almost forgot about the good the, the the skills and then ended up with just the the, the jazzing up side so yeah they got they got mm -hmm. completely the wrong criteria almost yes almost yes whereas but i think it, lizzie did a really lovely job a real oh, yes. lovely story but uh, it, it, so so go back you were circling folks for, for a reason oh no i was just it's circling saying all the techniques she did but maybe there wasn't enough mm -hmm. jazzing up so yes in in any other week it it was a huge transformation but in the judge's eyes, perhaps it wasn't as as jazzed up. But yes, when you look at Lauren's there, look at her her patchwork yeah. back, mm -hmm. and then as you say, uh, Lizzie's to her her back with the with the roller mm -hmm. skates. Charming. Yeah, and I like the way she just cut the sleeves off and rolled them up. I mean, that's what you would wear if you were out, you know, roller skating. Yeah. You know, you'd want you'd want less around your neck. You'd want short sleeves. You know, you'd want to be cooler. Um, <laughs> yes. So the whole thing made sense, didn't it? Yeah. Um, but, but maybe that's what it was, you know. Uh, so in a way, Fove did all that work mm -hmm. to transform it, but actually she didn't need to transform it. She just needed to jazz it up, mm -hmm. which seems, oh God, such a shame because it was, it was so transformed. Weird in a way, yeah. isn't it? I mean, it was, it, it was a more sober uh, transformation or jazz, but she did have yeah. the silver collar on there. Maybe she used a little bit more silver. Maybe yeah. that would have brought it into, um, you know, the jazzier genre. Who yeah? Who knows when 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 we're talking the judges there? What goes through their their minds when they're evaluating? Um, sometimes we agree. Sometimes we, well, mm. <laughs> more times we don't. Bless them. Uh, <laughs> let's let's move on to the made to measure. Uh, the made to measure. Um, oh look, who we've got there? The made to measure was um, they had to make occasion wear for a five year old. Um, that was that. So quite a wide brief because the occasion could be anything. Yes. It could be a party. Yeah. It could be going, going um, uh, to uh, I think uh, going shopping or going to the church, uh, as some of them said. Um, mm -hmm. Who have we got there showing? That's Fove's. That's Fove, and I think Fove was one of two that said, "I'm going to make something that I was never allowed to wear myself," oh, which yes. I thought was really, yes. <laughs> really sweet. Yeah. Um, <laughs> It was hard challenge because they've got to made it's made to measure. It's got to fit. But this is where actually we go full circle because it's what you said at the beginning. You know, a, a little toddler is there's no shape. It is uh, shoulders, hips, and waist. It's like a, like a tube almost, as you said. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and this particular crossover pattern is, I think, it's interesting because the trousers look like the girth is right but I don't, something's gone wrong with the way that top was put together and maybe the yeah. crossover wasn't far enough over um to bring the shoulders in more um 
Yes, because I don't blessed, know what went wrong, but it's were, so pretty. It's it's a almost, really lovely the combination of florals and stripes. It, yeah. it was just so nicely um, designed, and it was such a shame uh, that something went wrong in the bodice. Oh, is that not kind of similar to to uh, your one? Where was your one? Uh, uh, oh, uh, let's do fauve there. Oh, look, yeah, in in a way. It, yes, it is, you know. It is. Yes, mine is sleeveless, yeah. and the trousers are a little wider, but you're right. Yes, exactly. It's got that high waist, crossover bodice. It's got a bow. That's true. Yeah. yeah. But you see how close those shoulders are in mine to the neck. Yes, um, yeah. So I don't yeah. know. I don't know what, what could have gone wrong for her. Well... That's the, 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 the thing about the programme, isn't it? You might, uh, you might have been chatting. And bless Fove, she talked to, to us all the time. I, I, I will miss her um, because she, she had a, her little chats to the camera and to Sarah. We got more of her personality, whereas some of the other sewers were, were perhaps concentrating more, didn't talk so much. Bless Asma, when I think the crew went up to her, she went, I can't talk now. I'm too busy. <laughs> she must. Have, that would have been me. I'm too <laughs> too stressed. But Fove was a really good oh. good on screen there. She um, was the best uh, stand up comic in the whole of the world. Yeah, and I think absolutely. I'm going to miss. I'm going to miss. I'm going to miss her impressions. Ah, <laughs> <She> absolutely. Should... <laughs> her French accent, her Irish accent, it was That's spot it. on. Um, <laughs> let's go down. Uh, let's carry on through. Look through them. So uh, we've now got. Uh, Asthma's. <gasps> no. Dude, um, really dreamy. Very oh, dreamy. Isn't it? And now, can you tell us about this? The the amazing roll tem. Yes. How hard would that have been? Was that or, organza or uh, um, tulle? What was that bottom That's, bit? I think I, it was organza. And I think, I'm not sure, but I think that was a square. Right. With a circle cut out for the waist. So I think it was a handkerchief. Him. Oh, so that's it. Yeah. But, yeah. Yeah. But what she did, Asma just fed it through the, the rolled hem stitch yeah. on her own. So she put in a contrast thread and she would have been working on the straight of grain. The straight or the cross grain. Ah, not the bias. Right. So the machine would have taken it, given it a nice clean edge. It would have been very stable. So that worked out really well for Clever. her. Clever. The bodice is the bodice is a little too long. It's a little yes. too wide. So I think if anything, if she was marked down on anything, this would have been fit because yeah. it was a made to measure. Yeah, wonderful. Uh, let's go to Lawrence. Um, delightful number, uh, Peter Pan collar. It's it, that lovely ditzy print, like a Liberty ditzy print. This is so beautiful. And it grew in width with the yeah. gathering, the tears of her skirt. And she did that lovely twirl. Wasn't it lovely? Catwalk, Came to it life. just showed all, all the fullness. And, and a crisp white blouse and that lovely puff sleeve with the gathered the ruffle uh, just around the top of the arm. Yeah. Uh, just beautifully done. I, I know she, she had a problem with the, the height of the, um, the, the, the bodice. Underneath the um, underneath the white um, pleated what? section with the buttons. That bit there. Yeah, something went wrong there where it was it wasn't it wasn't matched. The curves weren't matched. Um, it wasn't tucked up enough uh. into that seam. So it, she had that. It was too tall there in the bodice, and I think that she got called up for that, didn't she? I do really like Laura and I do like watching her. She's mm. very calm and chilled as well. She's a bit like Tony Beanie and um, there's just something yeah. about her. I, I hope, I think I'd like her in my final four, I think now. Um, mm. Something about her. Some, you know, when you just can't quite, you just think, I just like watching you and I like listening to you and I, I like what you make. Mm. Um, yeah. Then we've got... She's very, she, okay, go, go ahead. No, go on, go ahead. you go. No, you carry on. No, I was just thinking. I was thinking when you were just saying that that I had a thought um, when I was watching it uh, the other night, and I thought I now is where you can tell who's getting a little bit tired, a little bit weary, and who is putting the the pedal to the metal. Yeah, people yeah. that 
you can sense they're used to working under pressure and this isn't that th this is going to bother them in fact they're going to get a real buzz out of it where there are other contestants so i don't want to name any names at the moment no, I, I made understand. some notes and i want to see yeah. if this i want to see if this works out the way i think it's going to work out but having taught and tutored and mentored and judged competitions and uh, had so much you know large projects on with students over the years it this just hit home with me ah this person is getting tired sort of uh, running out of ideas having yeah. trouble things are getting harder for them and and so mm. it's going to be interesting to see what happens all right in the next we'll come half. back to that maybe on week 10 and you can yep. say mm -hmm. i thought it was this person uh yeah. now this i don't know about you but this was my favorite and it probably shouldn't have been but oh. I, there's something about christmas I think there was everything about this just worked delightful. What did you think? It fit. I loved it too. It fit beautifully. Doesn't um, it? I love the I love the bodice, on the bias, perfectly yeah. centered. But then it gets distorted when you gather it up. So when I saw it in that first tier, you know, so you've got a you've got a bias tier, and then a red tier, and then another yeah. one, and that. For me, I would have loved to have seen a big red sash or something right there because yeah. that beautiful, nice, clean bodice and then it got, it got a bit distorted for me. So um, uh, this is what I, I think. I, so you, are you saying a, a, a red band there like that? Yes, yeah. Yeah. I would have thought it, that would have helped balance it out or, or a, a different kind of a trim on the hem of the uh, two bias tiers you know what, so, so the, something else on the bottom uh, one yeah because i think they yeah and I, they, this is where i didn't agree with the judges because i think the judges wanted something on that tier didn't they a red yeah. on there See, I and i was put, like yeah no not red but maybe a deep green maybe a velvet or something because to me oh. it was a bit bright for christmas you okay. had the deep red, but the green was a little, for me, is a little watery. It didn't really say Christmas. Yeah, you want that, um, but I think that it was crisp a, velvet yes. on that one. Yes, yeah. And, and on, on the bottom, one. maybe, as well. Oh, yeah. Yes. Now, look at that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, but Ravel. Mia, she's, she's, a very, um, she's a very safe designer. She's a very safe technician with her ideas. And but, I think she could do with... Yeah. yeah. Uh, taking a few more risks? Yes, I think yeah. so. I think she's going to need to. Yeah. But look at that fit, as you as we say. that It's made to measure for a reason. And she it's got perfect. it. Absolutely got it. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, and then we've got Vicky. Now, I really, really like this one. There's something quite clever about these sleeves. I really enjoyed Definitely. this technique. Yeah. What that is? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I did. She shear that with an elastic thread. Yes. Yeah. Um, and she said it was like sewing air. Now this had a high degree of difficulty. With uh, she had a, the line bodice, which okay, didn't come out perfect, and the overlock seam. That's a very simple matter of just turning the seam allowance inside. So yeah. that shouldn't have been picked on the way it was because that, that could have been remedied really easily. But the way she got the volume in it and then these practically sheer sleeves and the pin tucks, um, I thought this was a very, very yeah. good effort. And again, when the model spun, did you see it blue now? Yes. It was lovely. Yeah. Took flight. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. Um, <laughs> and then let's finish off with Tony Beanie, which got Garment of the Week. What did you think? I really liked that. When he said he was going to use scuba, I thought, oh, all right. Let's see. This will be interesting. But it was <laughs> the magic of those pleats, the pleats oh. into the waist, where everyone else got their volume with gathers. Yeah. He had these great big box pleats in. Stunning. And then the box pleats in the bow, on either side of the bow. Yeah. Two box pleats there. And it was very, like Esme said, it was different. It was it was it was different it was risky uh and it yeah. and it worked beautifully and in its purity yeah white very easy style and then that little ring of rhinestones i gotta say that delicate mm. right size uh, 
Could oh, could there have been a few more? I don't know. I think that was probably just right. Yeah. I don't know whether I would have seen. Yeah, beautiful. It, yeah. yeah, it just worked. You know, you you don't see a bow in the front of a dress like that. No, uh, but it, somehow it worked. Somehow the sculpture worked. So the uh, color worked. And I think that's came together. and that's the scuba there talking. I don't think that would it wouldn't have yeah. worked with any other material because the bow would have gone like that, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah. Wouldn't have yeah, held its form. It but yeah. this is the yeah. this is what we were talking about with Tony. Pencil behind his ear. That that uh, um, measurement. He's good with numbers and and following things to a precision. Look at that pleat dead in the middle, the center of that yeah. bow. Yes, it yes. is. Mm-hmm mastery that it's all, isn't it yeah it's so well lined up and it really shows the sculpture and the way the light plays on it yeah it really g- gives it such an amazing you know depth to it even though it's a solid color and it's you know it just yeah. really oh it, it worked and i love the length you know we talked about how the torso is often taller than the legs but he got that just right yeah. there's just enough legs showing with the little little lacy socks yeah and and her white shoes and, and practically white hair as well. Oh, it, it, it's it, it's stunning all round, isn't it? Um, mm-hmm. So uh, mm-hmm. yeah, and of course he got garment of, of the week with that, um, and uh, understandably because uh, it was it was it wasn't nice to see something different. But and and you say taking yes. taking a risk. Mm-hmm. Not everyone, not every amateur sewer, home sewer sews. Well, I've never sewn with scuba or neoprene. Is it something that we're seeing more coming through? Do you have have you how much have you sewn with scuba wise? I do. Well, it's interesting. You and I went to McCulloch and Wallace in the in in um in central London a while back, and you did a lovely video of that. And I've seen going in there. I see more and more scuba. Oh, so, really? And they usually yeah they get the ends you know, of the collection. So yeah. so the designers are out there using it in the collection. I've not seen it because I, I don't shop for those kinds of things, but but certainly I see a lot, a lot of bolts on, on, on the shelves in the fabric stores, so it's around. Well, maybe we'll see more and more. Maybe I'll have to have a go mm-hmm. at sewing it. But next week I will be wearing a shirt with a left arm and a right arm. <laughs> <laughs> um, which will be lovely. I, I know we talk and we, we, we've said this right from the beginning. We, we do analyse and we critique the sewing bee and, and some people say, oh, you should just watch it and enjoy it. Well, we do enjoy it, but we also enjoy critiquing our craft and being able to talk to fellow sewers in such detail. Uh, and I, I, I've said this many times before. I remember my brother and my dad always doing this after a football match and being quite envious mm-hmm. of the fact that I didn't really play football and then couldn't enjoy and join in with that discussion they would talk after watching Norwich City play and and losing they would talk for about an hour afterwards about who should have hit that shot who should have done this who when the manager should have taken him off or or moved him up front or pulled him back and there is something quite enjoyable about a discussion about a craft or a sport or anything that you love with people. And that's why we do this programme, because we don't often get the ch- opportunities to see sewing on telly and then be able to talk about it. So that is what this show's about. And it is is lovely to, to talk about our craft and share skills, share tips and, and be inspired. And that's the most important thing. I, I know we moan about the judges and, and, and the criteria, but it still inspires us to make and talk and share. And so many of you in the comments are wanting to do the same. It's lovely, isn't it, Carol? Mm-hmm. Well, we wanted to do this show because we wanted to um, decode and, and demystify what wibbly wobbly was and, and all yes. over the shop. And yes. that's a really bad job. And we yeah. and I yeah. I was getting a bit dispirited when I saw it because the show seemed to get more and more other than yes. just helping people with technique. What we yeah. want to do, what I want to do, is I want to show people how with a little bit of patience and preparation and setting things up that you can improve hugely and yeah. very fast if you just learn a few of the techniques you know i stumbled through this you know for 40 years um i want to help people get better and i and i the show should be more about that i think and also yeah. you know when i disagree with the way something is done it's only to point out that the really good effort that's been missed Ab- you know? absolutely. and sometimes yes 
yeah. you know, you know, it, bright colors and, and feathers and all that, they distract and they, and everyone goes, ooh, ah. Yeah. But sometimes, and with our foe today, bless her, um, we're going to miss her. But she, she did put a lot of work in and yeah. they could at least say that. They could say, we wanted it jazzy. This has been beautifully done. Yeah. More work is put into this, more thought's been put into this than, than most of these others. But it just didn't, you know, it didn't ring yeah. any bells really. So, and that's what we'd like. We'd like to, we'd like the judges to follow through on the criteria that they set. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, and it would then perhaps stop many people at home swearing and, sh and throwing a slipper or two at the TV. <laughs> but most importantly, we come back for more. And you come back for more we and do. you join us here on, on YouTube and, you, and you, you put in all the comments and everything. Now, next week, we're going to try and do a live one. We're going to be live live. How exciting is that, Carol? Are you ready for it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. totally yeah um, absolutely <laughs> so so tune in at eight o'clock we're gonna aim to be at eight o'clock if we're there five minutes past ten minutes past we will be there and we will be live so um uh we'll be talking to you in the comments live if you're there watching you can obviously still watch on record and later on as normal but if you're not doing anything at 8 p.m. next Thursday, uh, you can join us live because it's 90s week. Uh, we don't fully know what topics are going to be because we wait and see what comes up in the show. But we can start and kind of start getting an idea. 90s week, it's this idea of um, what the early, do we call them a... Um, a glamour, the the glamour model is it is it uh, Liz Hurley and her her uh, safety safety pin dress? Can you remember I that? Think, I think it's going to be a bit of Versace and things like that. Yeah, okay. Dolce and Gabbana, the big fashion houses, the big uh, couture projects, the yeah. daring the daring catwalk uh, <sighs> garments. I think yes, I think we're getting. I'm getting a little bit of picture now. So it will be exciting to see, but we'll be back doing uh, some sort of demo uh, but more importantly live chat there so you can try putting a question to carol and you never know we might be able to give you a live answer too <laughs> it's going to be scary but exciting oh, nice. isn't it <laughs> oh, i'm looking forward to it it's going to be great it's going to be really good fun thank you for joining us thank you for all your lovely comments that you put they are very valued we read them we try when we get time to answer them if we don't answer them we try and answer them in the show which i think we've certainly done today with the binding it's been wonderful so look forward to seeing you next week for 90s week thanks carol um and we'll see you Let's live can't wait thanks everyone see you later bye bye, bye, -bye.